Holy smoke, is this ain't no joke. Because when I said this was going to be a crazy week in the market, an absolutely insane week, I didn't know it was going to be this insane. I started taking stuff out of this video because there's so much going on out there and I usually try to keep my videos like 15 to 25 minutes. Well, uh, yeah, if I would have kept all the stuff in there, it would have been like an hour long video. Like I'm like, this is ridiculous, okay? How much stuff is going on out there in the financial markets this week? It, this is going to be a pretty much an unprecedented week that we've, we haven't seen in quite some time. So let's get straight into it. I hope you guys enjoy this as always. And uh, as always, thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, first off, I want to start with Weber. If you don't know Weber, they sell grills, okay? Gas grills, all types of different grills. This is what their business model is. Now, when it comes to Weber, the important thing to remember is the price point of their products. Almost all Weber's products are priced anywhere from $150 to around $900. So we wouldn't call them necessarily a big t ticket purchase, like a, like a house, like a car, or something like that, right? But it's a bigger ticket purchase. Like most people that buy a grill from Weber are going to spend several hundred dollars, right? And so this is a very important segment to just kind of understand what's going on here. Now, what happened is a complete disaster and this is just one of many disasters we're going to get into in this video and it just gets worse as we're going to go along essentially okay weber shares tumbled as much as 20 percent in the morning trading after the grill maker abruptly said ceo chris is departing amid waning demand for its products in stores and online oh boy okay the illinois based company also suspended its quarterly cash dividend that's a worrisome sign and said it is committed to working with lending partners to remain in compliance with its credit facility facilities uh what like like that's downright scary when you when you not only take away your dividend but now you're talking about you're committed to working with your lending partners to remain in compliance with with credit facilities people start wondering are you at jeopardy of going bankrupt like like what's going on here are you at jeopardy of not paying your your debt off like like what, what's the situation so that's that's really scary weber named their chief technology officer alan as their interim CEO, oh boy, okay. Yeah, when you got your CTOs also in the CEO, uh, quote, we are taking decisive action to better position Weber to navigate historic macroeconomic challenges, including inflationary and supply chain pressures that are impacting consumer confidence, spending patterns, and margins. No bueno, okay. No bueno. That's just bad, 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 bad. The company also announced preliminary results for a three-month uh, three period ending June 30th, pegging net sales at between 525 mil and 530 mil. Weber said its performance was hurt by slower retail traffic as rising inflation and other pressures weighed on consumers. It also hit. It also was hit by continued foreign uh, currency devaluations. Weber said the headwinds are expected to persist into fiscal fourth quarter, and it withdrew. It withdrew its fiscal 2022 guidance forecast due to market uncertainty, which basically a lot of these companies have been doing that lately. That's basically a company saying, you know, we don't know how the hell to guide our numbers. We don't know what's going on. We're clueless. We don't know what the orders are going to be coming in for a product. We don't know, man. So we're just not even going to guide the quarter because we're just clueless. That's what a lot of these companies are saying. And we've seen even from the biggest of the big companies in the world doing this, right, to a company like Weber that's, you know, a bigger business, but it's not like it's some massive corporation, right? And so this is the state of the economy right now. This is the state of the stock market right now. The company said it is considering layoffs and other ways to reduce expenses, including by tightening its inventories. It said it will also provide additional details when it reports third quarter results on August 15th. So yeah, more worrisome signs for the economy, right? First, at first it's been, oh, all these companies are you know, starting to dial back hiring, right? It was like, oh, you know, we're not going to hire nearly as many folks in 22 as we had expected to. Now, all of a sudden, you've got these companies saying, hey, you know what? Now we're starting to consider layoffs. And like I said, this is starting all the way from the biggest of the big corporations. I'm talking like Trillion Dollar Boys Club, right? And I'm talking about all the way down to a company like Weber. This is how it happens, man. This is how it happens. It's like one minute, they're, they're, they're not hiring as much. The next minute, all of a sudden, they're considering layoffs. The next minute, they're actually doing the layoffs, okay? In the quarter ended March 31st, Weber's net sales fell 7%, and its net loss came in at $51 million compared with net income a year ago, period. 
Uh, yeah, not not good. Okay. By the way, I think they got the the date wrong here. Okay. This is a uh, not the correct date. Uh, CNBC, I believe, have a typo here. Okay. So that shouldn't have likely said March thirty first. It should have said likely either May or June thirty first. There, just so you guys know. Okay. But that's not good when your net sales are falling and all of a sudden you're losing money when you used to be making money. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Not good. Not good. Whirlpool. Next up. Whenever you got to start your report with. Whirlpool reports Q2 results delivers in a challenging environment. Whenever you got to start your your report with, you know, excuses, I mean, you know, and I don't want to call it an excuse because everybody's dealing with it. It's a challenging environment. But whenever you got to put that out there, it's it's not going to be good. Okay, that's all I can say about that. No company ever puts something like challenging environment unless it's going to be a bad quarter. That's so right off the bat, you got to be like, oh dang, okay, this isn't good. Okay, here's the deal. Net sales were down 4.3%. If you don't know Whirlpool, by the way, they sell refrigerators, uh, washers, dryers, uh, you know, all those sorts of products, okay? Think about uh, ovens, uh, dishwashers, all those sorts of things, okay? That, that's, our, that's our business at the end of the day. Net sales fell 4.3%. Net sales excluding currency fell 2.3%. Ongoing EBIT, not EBITDA, EBIT, uh, was down 24%. Ongoing earnings per diluted share down 10% there. Uh, cash flow, complete disaster there as well. Not good, not good across the board, okay? Full year 2022 outlook. Expect full year 2022 revenues of approximately uh, $20.7 billion. That's down approximately 6% year over year. So here we are with a company that's revenues are now expected to start shrinking. I worry about Whirlpool if they're even, um, you know, I don't think they're even baking in how bad housing can potentially get in the back half of this year and into 23. I don't think they're even baking that in. And we know if the housing market comes to a grinding halt, Whirlpool numbers are going to be devastated, right? Because then all you're kind of hoping is for people to be buying that or like like they absolutely need like your refrigerator breaks so you got to go buy a new refrigerator and you consider a Whirlpool refrigerator, right? Or one of the other brands Whirlpool owns. Uh, that's not the best thing. The best thing for Whirlpool is when the housing market's hot, when a lot of people are buying new homes, they're getting new appliances, and also uh, some of these companies like Whirlpool or others will do deals with home builders, right, to basically have their products in, in a newly built home. So this is a situation that I think could get actually much worse for Whirlpool before it gets better. But look at this as a complete disaster. Reduced earnings per diluted share from 24 to 26 dollars to $9.50 to $11.50. Come on. Come on, man. I mean, that's just, oh my gosh, okay? On a gap basis, $22 to $24 on an ongoing basis. I mean, when you talk about that sort of reduction right there, guys, I mean, just a complete devastation. Devastation. Reduced cash provided by operating activities to $1.85 billion from $1.95 billion free cash flow of $1.25 billion. You know, Ugh, not good, man. Here's the deal with Whirlpool. The stock's up 2% after hours. So you might say, what? How is this stock up 2% on a disastrous report right there, right? There, right? Uh, revenue story is getting worse for Whirlpool. Their earnings per share are getting much worse for Whirlpool. Here's the deal with this stock, okay? It trades very, very cheap. A lot has been priced, and a lot of bad news has been priced into Whirlpool, right? Doesn't mean it can't go lower, but a lot of bad news has already been priced in the stock. It's, you know, down significantly. The, it pays a 4% plus dividend yield, right? And so a lot of people look at this one and they say, okay, you know, yeah, it's bad news. Whirlpool numbers aren't great, but why do I need to sell off the stock? And it moves up 2% after hours. And that's kind of the environment we're in right now where a lot has been priced in. Now, I don't think everything's necessarily been priced in with Whirlpool. If housing can, you know, gets considerably worse over the next six months, I think Whirlpool is going to maybe potentially even miss other numbers next quarter and the quarter after that analysts are expecting. I think the story gets worse for Whirlpool if the housing market continues to get worse over the next three, six, and nine months, okay? And so, but nonetheless, at least in the short term, a lot's been priced in and that's why it's hard to get one of these stocks down, okay? Now, I was looking and if, you, if you've if you been paying attention, appliances, appliances last year and even in most of 2020, Man, it was hard to find any deals out there. Like, if you were looking for appliances, good luck, you know, even trying to get $100 off an appliance or $150. One is demand was insane because a uh, housing market was insane, right? The second part of that whole story was 
Obviously, supply was very limited because of supply chain and everything that was going on there because of Roni Rona. Well, you know, woo, now their deals are back, okay? Now, all of a sudden, they're going to do all these deals and refrigerators, get 500 bucks off, 700 bucks off, $600 off. I mean, you were lucky if you could even get a deal on any appliance a year ago. 150 bucks, you were a lucky dog, okay? Now, look at this. Look at these deals. Save $471, 34% off. Save $181, 22% off, 23% off. I mean, you know, now it's just a very, very different environment. Then it gets to the next level of worse, okay? Walmart comes out of nowhere. They weren't supposed to, we weren't supposed to hear from Walmart today. Walmart comes out after the bell, about 20, 30 minutes after the bell, okay? And all of a sudden says, we're providing an update and it's not a good one. The company lowers their profit outlook for Q2 and fiscal year 2023. Operating margin expected to be about 4.2% for Q2 and 3.8% to 3.9% for fiscal year 23. Outlook for net sales higher for fiscal year 23, giving Q2 results elevated by inflation. Okay, so if everything is more expensive in your store, then it can make your your sales maybe look a little better because, gosh, if a a package of hot dogs is 10% more expensive, right? And a Walmart shopper has to buy the pack of hot dogs because they got to eat. Well, guess what? It looks like you're making 10% more, but it's really not driven by necessarily the demand for that product. It's driven because the price went up, right? Which can, if that money's being taken over there because somebody has to spend more on the hot dogs, right? They can't spend on those other things in your business model where maybe you actually make a much better margin, right? So this is a this is a disaster. When they came out and lowered their profit outlook for Q2 and for fiscal year 23, this is what the CEO had to say: the increasing levels of food and fuel inflation are affecting how consu- how customers spend. And while we've made good progress clearing hardline categories, a- apparel uh, in the Walmart uh, a P- uh, apparel, holy smokes, man, in the Walmart is requiring uh, more markdown dollars. We're now anticipating more pressure on general merchandise in the back half. However, we're encouraged by the start we're seeing in school supplies. Oh boy, okay. When you're one thing to go off of is we're encouraged to see the you know start of the the you know school shopping season. Oh boy, okay. You're you're in trouble. That's all I got to say about that. Okay. So nonetheless, this is a disaster. Walmart stock is down six percent after hours on this news, and this is just another I can say casualty of the operating environment we're in right now and inflation, everything is going on there. And last quarter, Walmart warned us, right, about about inventories. They warned us. It was a disaster, right? It was apocalyptic, as a former Walmart CEO called it. He called it apocalyptic. That's what we got going on. This is pulling down not just Walmart. It's pulling down Target as well. Target's down over 4% after hours. It's pulling down Amazon. Amazon's down 3.3% after hours. So it's pulling down all those guys, okay? You know, it reminds me of back in the day when I first got in the market in late 2008 and into 2009. And, you know, when I first got in the market, there were countless companies that would bring down their numbers, right? And they would use these, these words like challenging environment, the macroeconomic landscape is not good and all these sorts of things, right? And they'd bring down their numbers and bring down their numbers. And this was like, when I was first getting the stock market, this was a regular thing that happened. Like literally it was company after company was, you know, reporting down numbers, was coming out in preliminary announcing numbers, right? That we're, we're not we're not doing what the numbers we thought we were going to do. We're not doing the number the street thought us we were going to do, which is the street meaning analysts. And so that was a very normal environment at that time. And then things started to shift in about the back half of 2009, from what I remember, and into 2010. And a lot of companies started guiding up and coming out with preliminary numbers, but to the upside. And that was like a huge breath of fresh air. Uh, as, as the market started to come back and these companies started to report better numbers than were expected, right? But when I first got in the market in, in 08 and in 09, man, I can tell you it was not that sort of environment. It was this, this type of stuff was the norm. This was the norm, right? And so, you know, we're in that environment again, man. I just got to call it what it is. We're in that environment again, and we're likely not getting out of that environment this year. It's a very, it's a very tough proposition to get out of that environment this year. 2023, I think, is a possibility. But this year is going to continue to be a mess. Inflation is not magically going away. It, it, with the story can get better with inflation. But even if inflation is at 5%, that's still 5%. That's still a really, really high number, right? Yeah, it's not 9%, but it's still 5%. Even if it, go, if it goes down to 4%, still 4%. That's a pretty big, steep number, right? And so 
It's going to continue to be a a tough market, right? In terms of the stock market here today, I call it a mixed bag day here today. Dow was up a little bit. S&P 500 was up a little bit. NASDAQ was down a little bit. Russell was up a decent amount today, 0.6%. VIX was also up, which is weird to see three out of the four indexes green, but then the VIX was up, right? Meaning volatility is starting to enter the market. And believe me, it's going to enter the market a lot more over the course of this week. You know, I was looking at some stocks I own and no big upside movers today. There was some green stocks, but no big upside movers. The planet is the only one that's really moving big right now, and that's because there's a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement on in the MJ space because of potential uh, federal legalization down the line, and uh, there's, some, there's some progress being made on that front right now. So with some progress being made in that front, there's some excitement starting to build in some of these sort of stocks, and I can tell you guys, you know, if, if jobs are lost, if we actually go into a recession, Federal legalization will come a lot faster than you think because the government will all of a sudden be, you know, right now the government hasn't really needed to find new jobs, right, for folks because, shoot, there's been plenty of jobs out there. But let me tell you this. If all of a sudden unemployment starts to go up in the back half of this year, right, and all of a sudden the job story gets worse and worse, all of a sudden the government's like, crap, uh, we need jobs. The job story gets worse and worse and worse, right? And all of a sudden you start to look for avenues and opportunities, and if you federal legalize that product, that's going to be, you know, I would say it's, it's an industry that I could see having a one to five million jobs directly impacted from that over the next, you know, let's call it 10 or 20 years. It's a huge industry that's just on kind of on the DL right now, but it's being hampered because there's no federal legalization there. And so that's just a massive opportunity, but they, they haven't really needed to push anything as far as that goes because the jobs environment's been really good. You take that away and believe me, the government starts to look around and say, okay, where can we get jobs at, man? And the, the you know, things start to shift really, really quickly. Big tech was all down across the board here today, pretty much, uh, which was interesting because, you know, Seeing three of the four indexes green, but then, you know, big tech just messy, messy red. This this just shows you big money, big money, not ready to buy uh, on this week, at least, you know, because big money's looking in there like we got to still get through all these earnings. Who knows what Apple comes in with? Who knows what Meta comes in with? Who knows what Google? Some of these companies have already disappointed, not Apple. They've been tearing it up. But some of these companies like Meta has already disappointed. Do they disappoint again? And what does that mean for a company like that? Right. And so they're. This is called big money. Still a little scared going into this week, right? Housing stocks. These stocks all got hit big time today. I think you know, with housing stocks, the funny thing is, yeah, they've already been hit a lot, but it's like, I don't think the housing picture is getting better anytime soon. I think best case scenario, best case scenario is the housing picture gets better in 23, but I'm not even convinced of that. I mean, you might have to push out to 24. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out who even wants to own housing stocks right now. Like literally. I don't, I don't know who would want to own these stocks right now, just to be quite honest. There's, there's nothing to be excited about in housing for a long time until, until the economy gets a lot better and, on top of that, until we get into a situation where, where interest rates are in a much lower state, right? And mortgage rates are, you know, more in the 3 to 4% range. We don't have to go back down to the twos, which, you know, some folks were able to take advantage of, Right. But until we get to a in, until we get to a lower than a five to six percent number on the average thirty year like we've been, this is not going to be a pretty picture. And, and inventories are rising. A lot of people are scared about about housing, you know, and prices going lower. So why would you buy right now? So that's a mess. I'm just still trying to figure out why anyone would own housing stocks right now. Oil and gas stocks. Yeah, these babies all moved up green. We don't like to see that. Okay, unless you own some oil and gas stocks, congrats to you. But everybody else uh, in the stock market. Don't own oil and gas stocks, and we don't want to see those babies green right now in this sort of environment. Yeah, like I said, you know, you look at the uh, heat map, mixed bag day here today. You know, that's just that's just what it was, and it's clear. Look at the biggest weights. Look at the biggest weights. This is big money saying, nah, nah, nah not yet, not yet. We're we're a little concerned going into this week. We want to see what happens with these earnings. You know, you guys can get excited about all these smaller ones. Go for it. Do what you want. But in order to move Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Tesla, these sorts of stocks, you need big money coming in. Big, big money, okay? Uh, we're talking about you know the big hedge funds, the big funds in general, and they're not ready to step in quite yet. That's clear in, in a heat map, okay? Now, Tuesday, we got uh, just a craziness going on. You got UPS reporting, Coca-Cola reporting, GM, GE, McDonald's, Raytheon Technologies. You have Albertsons, you got 3M, all reporting before the bell. Then after the close, you got... 
3.4 trillion dollars of market cap reporting right there in alphabet google mcdougall in microsoft right then you got visa 400 to 500 billion dollar market cap reporting right you got uh well enphase is more of a i think a popular i call it retail stock and some of you guys might own enphase you got chipotle you got texas instruments big semi player that's going to be very important to kind of hear their numbers so i mean and then mondelez which is a food company and that's one that's just, uh, you know, trying to probably deal the best with inflation they possibly can. So I think that's going to be important. To, I think, so Tuesday is going to be crazy, okay? Absolute craziness. As far as me out there, I bought some stocks today. Uh, I did buy some Chef. I bought some Foot Locker here today. So obviously growth stock and, and uh, dividend play as well. As far as me, I'm being a little timid in the market right now. Uh, I've been, you know, pumping tons of money in the market the last, I'd say, six months or so. So I'm... I'm kind of laying back a little bit right now and I want to see what happens this earnings season. But, you know, sometimes if I get a couple prices that, that I see attractive, I'm going to take advantage of those deals. Foot Locker is a great dividend stock and it's just a very well-run company. And uh, the chef, you know, obviously you guys know how much I love the chef for the long term. So, yeah, that's just a couple moves I made there here today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you're looking to learn how to value a stock so you know if it's overvalued, undervalued, failure, fairly valued, if you want to learn how to understand financial statements like a CPA would, if you're looking to get access to my dividend investing mastery, become a master of the stock market course and the thriving in a recession course and get access to the private Discord chat and know the moves I'm making in the market, go ahead and apply. And I will be pinned comment down there for the private stock group and uh, we'll see if we can get you in. Much love as always, guys, and have a great day.